Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This minister, Paul, and she had another day of the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for January 3rd, 2014. It's a Friday. Amen. So I want to briefly touch on a subject that's been on my heart for about a week. I'm going to be as brief as possible which means this will probably run about three hours. I'm sorry. Um, let me stay focused. Help me, Lord. I, I just want to precipice this with, you know, a statement from my heart. I was born and raised up in the church, and I don't say that to brag. Um, you know, the Bible says to raise your, your ch child up in the ways of the Lord and when he grows older he won't depart from them so if you have children it's so important to teach them sound doctrine and what I just consider myself so blessed not boasting or bragging humbly blessed if you only knew everything I went through in my life at when I was younger if you only knew but God knows and that's really all that matters is God knows um, and what I see happening since, I want to say, since about 2011, the last couple of years, I'd say over the last two years, maybe it's just because I, I watch uh, a lot of YouTube videos and read Facebook posts and stuff, is the doctrine that I was raised on, in my opinion, is very sound. And, and it's become twisted but you know I find comfort in that and I hope you can find comfort in this also um, that Jesus said that would happen and Jesus can't lie he said that in the last days that there'd be a falling away and that the doctrines of demons would be preached think of that doctrines of demons and there would be false prophets and false teachers and a lot of anti stuff anti means you know the opposite of in other words it's not christ like it's unchrist like it's antichrist like he says a lot of voices will go out to the world he, you know thank you jesus i just want to stop right now and say thank you jesus let me say a quick prayer lord jesus i come boldly to the throne of grace according to your word that i can come lord jesus i I put my faith and trust in you as my high priest, as my Lord, as my Savior, and as my God. Lord Jesus, give me the wisdom that comes from above, hallelujah, to, to put forth this word in, in a graceful way, in a compassionate way, in a loving way. Lord, give me the words to say because, you know, just make my lips like the tongue of a ready writer to, to put this out so it can be received in love and that we can all learn and grow because lord we want to obey your commandments and we want to follow your word and it, it's getting real hard down here father you can see you know the, your word says that you know the end from the beginning that before i even woke up today you knew that I would be doing this, and I just find this amazing, and I find you awesome, God, and I love you so much, so much. Lord Lord Jesus, I love you so much for what you've done in my life daily. Lord, you know, search my heart. I love you, Jesus, and I'll always love you, Jesus. Thank you for what you've done in our life. Bless your children, Lord God. Amen. Okay. Oh, man, I feel good. We could just end right there. 1055, <laughs> y'all have a great day. <laughs> Woo, thank you, Jesus. Man, I could just end there. Now I don't even really want to do this. <laughs> I'm going to go back to sleep. Oh, my goodness. Woo, that felt good. Just stop and just start praying and thanking Jesus for who he is and what he's done for you. But... There's a lot of things occurring right now that, as I said, they, they don't line up with how I was raised. I'm going to drink a tea here. It's early out here in California, and it looks like it's a beautiful day. It looks like spring out there. <laughs> it really does. It's, it's January, and it looks like spring. But this is a new year, and don't you want to start it off right? 
Can I get one amen? Don't you want to start it off right? Are we here to fight? That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not... I already know before I upload this that someone's going to say, Oh, he's talking about me. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So thank you, Jesus. And so I, I don't, I'm not on here to offend anybody, man. I, I've been getting so much correction from God daily. Trust me, you don't see it, but I feel it. <laughs> I feel it, you know, because in Hebrews 12, he says he loves those that he, he chastises and corrects. You know, you know, we are clay. We were made from dust. And he's the potter. And when he molds you, it can hurt a little bit sometimes. Jesus referred to it as pruning. And if you're not getting pruned and molded, you should really uh, cry out to God and ask him why. And ask him, you know, mold me, use me, uh, teach me. Um, that That's just, I don't want to get too far off on this, but I want to do this as quickly as possible. Uh, all I want to say is I'm not making this video to hurt anybody. I'm just making this video to put out there to for others to to learn, to, to learn the way I learned growing up. And I want to tell you this. This is just my opinion. I don't know it all. But I'm going to tell you, I was born and raised being taught this stuff. And what I'm seeing being taught uh, by others is incorrect and I just want to teach you the way I was taught I want but I please and I'm saying please I'm begging you please Jesus said take heed that no man deceives you and I'm so thankful that he said that because I'm a man so I could deceive you you understand that we all fall short of the glory of God that's why we got to stick to his word so please take what you learn here, everything that I say, and then go ask others. You know, I used to call uh, assemblies of God because, you know, I had a lot of questions in 2007. And, you know, I, I, I think it's okay to have questions. We don't question God, but we have questions. You know, for example, one of my questions was, why didn't Moses make it into the promised land, you know? I thought that was cold blood and it bothered me. But, you know, I got answers. And, and then after my mother went home, uh, I, I couldn't call her for answers anymore. And so I called a friend of mine. His, name, his name's Johnny. And uh, he, he's a pastor in San Jose. That's where I was born, San Jose. Um, he, he, he always taught me that, you know, the assembly of God, AOG, when it comes to like doctrine, they're Bereans. They stricts, they don't make up new doctrines and they stick to the word. And so he, 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 he was very wise. He told me, you know, if you ever have any questions about the word of God, because I was having trouble in a corporate church and he had left it. Him and I actually, I, he, he and I worked in this church um, in the capacity of ushers and security and stuff. For a long long time and we started seeing things that just didn't rub right with our spirit not to put the church on blast i ain't even gonna mention him it's not important but um we wanted to know you know is is what we're being taught here in this corporate church there's about 10 of them the other nine are called plants you know you plant a church in different cities but the main church was in sacramento california that's where i went to most of my Bible school. Um, what I wanted to know is what, what we we're being taught on certain things or, you know, it, it didn't line up with the word. And, but, you know, when they tell you, it's like, you know, this is the truth. And, you know, I used to call my mom, like I said, but now, now I can't call her anymore. I had to grow up in the Lord real quick. Because deception abounds, man, like crazy. And I, I needed to stay grounded in the truth and the word. Uh, so I'm going to give you my opinion. But you can call around. What, what Johnny always told me was to call in a local assembly of God. Or even go in and ask to talk to a pastor. And ask him the questions I had. 
you know, not just some random person, someone that has been taught. And I'm just saying AOG just because that's what I use. I'm not saying that that's what you should do, but it really helped me when I saw deception because, man, deception can creep on you. Anybody can make anything sound true. Look at David Koresh in Waco, Texas, and um, Jim Jones in the People's Temple, man. <clears throat> Don't you think they thought he was telling the truth when they started drinking the Kool-Aid? That's why this is so important. We can all be deceived. Don't ever, the Bible says, don't think yourself more highly than you ought to lest you fall. <clears throat> so this is going to be my opinion. But I, uh, the Lord has led me to do this, and uh, or maybe I led myself to do this. I'm tired, of, <laughs> I'm tired of getting scrutinized so heavily, you know. Maybe I led myself to do this. I'm going to be just say it like that. In Revelation 7, we're introduced to a special group of believers, and they're called the servants of God. Remember that. And it's coincidentally, which I don't believe in, so why did I say that? <laughs> uh, I need more tea. Revelation 7.3. You with me? Go to Revelation 7.3. They're, they're sealed by God for the ministry uh, before the seventh seal is opened. Um and you can go back to Revelation 6 and read about the, the seals and that. Um, and there's trumpets. We all know there's trumpets. All these things have to occur. Uh, but l let's just start with the number 12. Um, in Isaiah 9, 6, and I guess I'll just put a bunch of links for your help. Isaiah 9, 6 records that for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God. Did you hear that? The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, capital F. Now this is talking about a man being born that will have the title of God. I mean, th this is the King James and the Prince of Peace. And then it says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Let me go forward, 197. Of the end, okay, listen to this, King James. Of the end, so I'm going to do 9, 6, and 7 of Isaiah. Isaiah was a mighty prophet. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Amen, hallelujah. Upon the throne of David, so it's letting you know his lineage. And upon, remember when the guy said, son of David, have mercy on me. That's why they knew he was the son of David by lineage. Read the first book of Matthew. It shows the 14 generations, I think it is, but let's continue. And upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, ever, uh, henceforth ever, even for forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So Jesus, he's prophesying the birth of Jesus and that the, his government, not, not our government, thank goodness, the kingdom of God, the government kingdom of God, the very structure of God's kingdom would rest squarely on the souls of Jesus Christ, on the shoulders, sorry, squarely on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. And, and it says that this government, that he's going to create in the kingdom of God shall have no end. So, so it's very important to notice that the first thing is, is, we know is 12 tribes were established in the Old Testament. And when, when Jesus was born and fulfilled, this prophecy I just read was fulfilled, okay? When Jesus was born. He immediately went <clears throat> and picked how many disciples? 12, right? Don't you find that fascinating that it was the number 12? To me, the number 12 has always represented the, uh, his government. Now, again, that's just my opinion. You, you don't have to believe me I'm telling you what I was taught. That's why I believe in the, the end of the revelations when it says the 24 elders are casting their crowns. And I was telling my father this the other day and he was blown away by this revelation. The 24 elders represent his government, 12 from the first tribes, this is, thank you, Jesus, 12 from the first uh, 
the tribes in the Old Testament under the Old Covenant, there was 12 tribes. And then 12 from the disciples in the New Testament under the New Covenant. Jesus went out and specifically chose 12 disciples and named them. Some of, he said, you know, I knew you before I even walked up. He knew. And look at who he picked. If, you, if, you, if the devil's getting you to feel down on yourself, Jesus didn't go out and pick perfect people. He picked uh, tax collectors and fishermen. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he's just so loving. So when it says the 24 elders are casting their crowns, I personally believe, and this is my opinion, and this is how uh, I'm going to stay. I'm not going to let anybody drift me away. Hey, that was pretty cool. Um, that those are the 24 elders. And you know, and you know how I can kind of firm that up is, isn't it amazing that uh, the tribe of Dan is excluded? So it, it, you know, it, but it they chose another twelve in Revelation seven six. Uh, it says one of the sons of Joseph takes his place, and also don't it, don't you find that amazing? The, the word of God is amazing that in J uh, Judas betrayed Christ. And you know what the first thing they did in, in uh, uh, you know, in business, what I want to say, you know, the, what, the very first thing that the business they took care of in, in starting the church was they replaced Judas because they wanted to keep it at 12. I just find that amazing that a tribe was replaced and a disciple was replaced to keep it at 12. The Bible says, and the lot fell on Matthias. It's just amazing to me. And then there's 24 elders. So in Revelation 7, 3, they're sealed. We, there's things that we can hear that are undisputable and undeniable. These, these servants are called sons of God and children of Israel. That gives us a clue. One, they're male. And two, they're children of Israel. You know, that's what the word of God says. It, it, it says the 144,000 are not sealed to become Israel, but they are sealed out of Israel. That's what the word of God says. I don't really, I'm getting disturbed on some of these things that are being said on YouTube. Uh, they're going to evangelize during the tribulation. And Hebrews 7 clearly shows you uh, this. Um I'm going to read something from Revelation 21, 12 through 14. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels. Thank you, Holy Spirit. See, 12 gates and 12 angels and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Um, and then the 12 apostles. I've actually never seen that before. So even there's 12 gates in heaven. Uh, it's just amazing. So I'll put a link to that. I got a lot of, that's Revelation 21, 12 through 14, if you can remember. Uh, in Revelation 20, verse 4, it says, Then I saw thrones, and seated on them were to whom the authority to judge was committed. Also I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, for the testimony of Jesus and for the word of God and those who had not worshipped the beast or its image and had now this is very important because Revelation 13 says that the Antichrist will rise up with the false prophet and there will be a mark of the beast that you won't be able to buy or sell and I'm not going to be here I'm already sealed you know let's talk about the sealing sealed is is being sealed by the Holy Spirit it truly is. The, 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 and I'm going to give you some scriptures here because the, these 144,000 are the first fruits, quote, of a redeemed Israel. And it was previously prophesied about this uh, in Ro uh, Zechariah 12.10 and Romans 11.25 through 27. They, when they evangelize, please understand this. It, they are living in evangelizing in a post-rapture world. 
when they're proclaiming the gospel, it's during the tribulation period. And we haven't entered that yet. Uh, and millions will be saved. A great multitude that no one can number, it says, from every tribe and people and language, Revelation 7, 9, will, will come to faith in Christ. There's when, you know, they're sealed. The Bible talks about when you're sealed, it's the Holy Spirit sealing. You see, I believe that I've been sealed and redeemed. You don't have to believe that, but I believe that I've been sealed and redeemed. And uh, because I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I'm remaining obedient to him, and my sins are forgiven, and that I'm filled with the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, that I'm watching and waiting for his return. And he's going to meet me in the sky. A trumpet's going to blow. And I'm going to be caught away. Revelation 4.1. Well, there's so many scriptures on that. But I don't want to get into a debate on that right now. The rapture. People don't. People. I'm just going to tell you how I was raised. And I'm giving my opinion. I'm allowed to do that. It's my opinion. Now, our goal as followers of Christ, should to be evangelizing now. Please hear me. Now. Not after the tribulation, and we're not in the tribulation. If you believe that, my opinion is you're deceived. Um, we will be caught up and taken away. We will be caught up and taken away because we have not been appointed to wrath. And we do not go through the tribulation. And, and that, you know, there's so many teachings on this that say one way or the other. I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. I do not believe I'm appointed to wrath. I believe that I can be counted worthy to escape what's coming. That I'm to look up because my redemption draweth nigh. And I'm going to be with the Lord forever. And there's going to be no more sorrow and no more tears. And then after we're caught up. The whole world goes into what's called Jacob's trouble or the great tribulation. Now, at that time, he's a God of second chances. Now, this is just how I was raised. There's seven years, three and a half good years, three and a half bad years, because the Antichrist will break the peace treaty right at the 3.5 year mark. Read, please read Daniel uh, 9. I'll read the whole book of Daniel. Even Daniel prophesied this. Um, Revelation 6 talks about the, the wrath to come. and the, So I, I was taught that the seven years was broken in half when someone claiming to be Christ would break the peace, a seven-year peace covenant. Okay? But I'm not here. I'm in heaven in my mansion chilling. And so... God wants to still get people to heaven. And that's why Jesus said it's a narrow path because there's not a lot of people that are living the way they should according to the Bible. And they will miss the rapture. They'll be left behind. And God needs people to continue to evangelize after uh, you and I, the believers that are already redeemed right now through his blood. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Um, and Christ shed that blood for me. I believe that. I received that. He rose again. He sits at the right hand of God and he said he's coming back. So as soon as we're caught away and the tribulation starts, God is going to seal 144 thousand male Jews they're going to have special protection from all of the trumpets and seals in Revelation 6 etc uh, they will be protected by that and then there'll be the two witnesses none of that occurs till after the church is gone I, I, I'm just saying that none of that occurs till after uh, we are caught up the, because the Lord wants none to perish and they will, they will have to be martyred and beheaded, but not until God says so. See, people keep trying to do things their way and 
You know, it, it, it's God's timing. It's God's will. This is God's world. People get a sense of entitlement. We, we are servants of God and we are to preach the truth. And anybody promoting anything that doesn't line up with the word of God, you really need to be careful. Um, cause I truly believe that after we're caught up, it's going to be really, really difficult. It says you won't even be able to buy or sell. They will continue to witness. They will be sealed with the Holy Spirit. And I'm just going to close with this. This ran 15 minutes longer than I thought it would, but I, I, I warned you at the beginning, um, this thought keeps coming into my head. I'm just praying over it right now in the name of Jesus. The way I was taught by my mother was that, and, and I can't wait to see her again, was, was that when, when Jesus came, see, they already had the law and they were living under the law. It was prophesied that he would come in Isaiah and several, all throughout the whole Old Testament. He came down here in John 3.16 and he, he died for, for the world for, for, to pay our sin debt. But you have to receive that redemption. You have to make him Lord and Savior. But Israel, uh, most of them don't believe that. They rejected him as Savior and killed him. The way she taught me was that and I hope this helps somebody. They Israel is still looking for Christ's first return that Isaiah prophesied. They don't believe I do you understand this? They they still under the law. They're not under mercy and grace. They're under the law. They don't they do not believe that Christ has came yet. They they missed it. And I just wonder how that makes God feel, but he already knew. So he has, you know, this, he's going to implement his plan. Could be any day now he's going to begin to implement this plan of, you know. So, and it's all recorded in his holy words. That's why I believe they have to be there. Because when the Antichrist rises up, it says, if possible, even the very elect would be fooled. See, now I've always believed that the, the very elect he's referring to are the 144,000. It's impossible to deceive them. God made it that way because they are going to witness and bring millions and millions of souls into the kingdom of God. That's what it says in, in the book of the Revelation. Um, so if someone is here is on YouTube, and again, this is no offense to anybody. They're claiming to be one of the two witnesses or they're claiming to be one of the 144,000, then pray for them. Because what they're, what they're basically saying is that they, they, they want to miss their proposal, the great catching away. They want to miss the rapture intentionally and go into the tribulation when we're not even at that point yet in the word. We're not there yet. We're very close. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen tonight. It could happen right now. You know, this video could just go silent and never upload and I would just be caught up. It's at that point that God puts into motion this, these 144,000. Some people said they could have already been born. That's true. They could already be walking around, but they have not been sealed yet. Otherwise, we'd know. We'd be hearing about it. God did that for a reason. Because they are they are in the post trib world, and the bride of Christ is not. Um, so if someone comes to you and says they're one of the two witnesses or one of the hundred forty four thousand, just say why you don't want to go up in the rapture. Why would you want that? Because you're gonna go. I just. I don't understand the reason and the logic of that. But again, this is just my opinion. I'm going to put a whole bunch of links for you to read and study for yourself. And I highly, highly encourage you to take it to God first. Take it to God first and, and just ask him, Lord, reveal your truth to me in your holy word. You know where his truth is? He said, my word is truth. 
and then ask someone who's grounded in this word right here what they think. And then pray again and then go back to the Lord again and keep going back to the Lord till you get the truth. 